With the announcement of DriverKit and system extensions in 2019, Apple introduced new security features and important changes. These changes, however, impact the way that we can develop drivers for existing and future macOS platforms. And in this video, I would like to explain the main differences between the old ARMY drivers and the newly released DriverKit drivers that you can both access from our ARMY website. Previous to macOS 10.15 Catalina, all drivers were running as a kernel extension, which had certain access to functionalities at the kernel level. For security and stability reasons, Apple decided to discontinue the kernel extension framework. Now drivers are being executed as a system extension. System extensions are similar to kernel extensions, but they are running in the so-called user space. System extensions make the macOS platform more stable and secure. If a system extension is crashing, it won't affect the kernel, which is a good thing because if a program is crashing, that means your whole operating system remains intact and won't crash with the app. The downside of the system extension, however, is that the access is less direct and that other programs could interfere with the performance of the audio driver. Apple also announced that the support of existing kernel drivers for USB and PCI Express devices will be removed from macOS anytime in the future. Therefore, manufacturers are forced to develop driver kit drivers to make sure their devices will be compatible to all upcoming macOS versions. Other than expected, however, kernel drivers are still supported today and work even with the latest macOS Ventura. Currently, RME users can choose between two different driver architectures for the latest Macs, which both have different strength. Kernel drivers seem to have the highest performance and robustness, but require to reduce security for the whole system. Driver kit drivers, on the other hand, are easy to install keep the overall stability and secure state of the Mac, but might show less performance and robustness compared to kernel drivers. Because of the aforementioned security concerns from Apple, installing the old kernel extension drivers is not as straightforward as one might think. You will have to reduce security settings under Mac OS. Let me show you how this is done. First, we need to boot the Macintosh in recovery mode, which will give us access to the security settings. Since the introduction of the M1 chip, there are two different ways to use the recovery mode under macOS Ventura and later. Start by shutting down your Mac. Wait a few seconds and then proceed. If you are running an Intel-based Mac, hold down the power button while pressing Command and R on your keyboard until the recovery mode appears. If you are running an M1 or M2 Macintosh, hold down the power button until the recovery mode appears. Once you have reached the recovery mode, select Options and enter your admin data. In the top menu, go to Utilities. Startup Security Utility. Select the system where the RME drivers will be installed. Continue with Security Policy. Select Reduced Security, allow user management of kernel extensions from identified developers. After this is done, reboot your computer. Now you can install the kernel extension driver. Start by downloading the correct macOS 11 or later M1 slash M2 driver for your RME device. Unpack the zip file, double click the package file and install the driver. Before the reboot for finishing the driver installation, open System Preferences, Security and Privacy. There should be a gray Allow button in the right lower area. Then confirm using the RME kernel extension. It is important to wait no longer than 30 minutes to allow the driver. Otherwise, you'll have to install the driver again. While the new DriverKit drivers do not need this rigorous installation process, there are still some important points to mention before installing the DriverKit driver onto your system. Legacy USB interfaces such as the Fireface UC 
UCX, UFX and 802 will need the latest firmware in order to be recognized by the driver kit driver. It is therefore mandatory to update the firmware of your RME interface with the latest version of the Flash Update tool before switching to the driver kit driver. Please be aware that it is necessary to have a kernel driver installed in order to execute the Flash Update tool. In short, there are three ways to do this. First, with an existing Mac that has an old kernel driver installed. Second, by installing the latest kernel driver 3.28b, as mentioned before. Or third, with a Windows computer. Please watch our dedicated firmware update video for more details. At this time, it is unclear when Apple drops kernel driver support. But when they do, RME customers can continue working, as RME provides both kinds of drivers, with an identical feature set and support for all current Macs. One of the main reasons RME still continues to develop kernel extensions is the better performance compared to system extensions, because system extensions have a lower priority on the processor. All right, I hope this video was helpful and gave you a better understanding of the current situation, why we have so many different drivers now available. And I hope this video gave you a better guideline on which driver to choose right now. If you have any questions, please write them down in the comment section below or visit us in the RME forum. It's a great community to learn a lot about RME interfaces and total mix and digi check. Thank you so much for watching.